This video will show you how to create some of the interactive features that you'll need to know how to do for your Project 5, the interactive PDF. Uh, I'll show you how to do the email link, uh, page navigation, and the table of contents. For this exercise, I'll be using the InDesign file from uh, the reading number five, the principles of photo composition. So let's take a look at kind of what's going on here with the file. Uh, we're going to go to the pages first, and see here's the listing of all of our pages. We've got these set up as, as facing pages, and you'll notice there are two master pages. And yeah, in InDesign, you can serve two masters, or as many masters as you want to have. Um, the first master, Master A, I only have applied to the title page because I don't really want all the interactive features uh, and the page numbers and all that kind of stuff appearing on the title page. The second master uh, is B, it applies to the, uh, uh, to the facing pages, and that's the master that's applied to all the other pages in this document. And so if we look at our master pages, we see that Master page A is, is simply uh, a blank page right now. We might put a uh, page turn on that. Um, and then Master B has our page folio and our page numbers. And so if you remember how to do this from the uh, Project 3, the multi-page layout, you should already know how to do your page, um, your page folios and your page numbers and how to set those up into your master pages. But we can look at any uh, kind of any spread here and uh, we can see that the page folio is appearing in each one of these, as well as the page numbers. For the, uh, for the table of contents, we're going to put that on page two. Typically, a table of contents will come right after a title page. So I've inserted uh, a blank page there at page two, and this is where we'll put the table of contents, and this will actually be the last thing that we do in this particular document. What we're going to work on first is to get our page navigation set up, uh, forward, backward, return to table of contents, and things like that. And we will do that in the B master. So let's, uh, let's get to the B master page, and we'll start doing some of the, uh, uh, some of the page navigation here. Okay, I'm going to uh, zoom in on this uh, page folio, command plus, a couple of times. And what I'm going to want to do is create three buttons in this folio. One that would be a back one page button, uh, one that would be a forward one page button, and then a third one that'll be in the middle that will be to return to the table of contents. So we'll start with that. To, to create that, I'm just going to make a text box. And I'm going to apply my um, folio style that I already have set up. So it's in the same, same style as the other type here. So page folio and table of contents. And let's see, maybe I'll center that. And then I don't need quite so much room on that text box. And our room is uh, getting a little tight here. So I'll make that a little smaller and that'll work for the table of contents button. Um, for the page forward and page back buttons, uh, there are a number of ways you can do it. I'm just going to put an arrow on it. I think most people will understand that an arrow means click here and, and it changes the page. And the easiest way to do that is really with your stroke option. So I'm going to click here on stroke and get my uh, line tool. And under stroke, um, Let's, we'll start with, say, one point, and then you have the options here of putting uh, arrowheads on the stroke. So I'm going to select an arrowhead. Uh, I'll go with the curved one and click and drag. And let's see what that looks like if it's a little bigger. Um, I might actually keep that small. Okay. And then if I want one on the other side, I can draw one the other way. Uh, or if I want to make sure that I get it the same size and length and everything, I just copy it, paste it, bring it, into, bring it in line, and then um, go into Object, Transform, Rotate 180 degrees, and there it is. It looks like it's maybe one click different level. 
Now we want to start working with uh, some of the interactive features. So get rid of our stroke panel here. We need to change our workspace from the advanced to uh, interactive for PDF. And that brings up a whole set of different um, panels and things. To create this navigation where when we click on table of contents, we want it to take us to the table of contents, we need to create um, what InDesign calls a bookmark. In other words, we need to tell InDesign where this is going to go. So to do that, our table of contents is going to be page two. So let's go to page two, and we're going to click on bookmarks, and then new bookmark, and we'll just call it table of contents. Okay, I think we're done with our bookmarks panel, so I'll close that. Now we're ready to make this uh, table of contents a button. So I'm going to click on it, and we're going to. We can either go to Object Convert to Button, or we can go to our Buttons and Forms here. So I'm going to click on that. The panel comes up, and right here by the trash can is the uh, the button to convert to a button, button button. So we're going to create a button there. We're going to give it a name. Say back to table of contents. If you have a lot of buttons, you want to name your buttons, don't you? Uh, the event is going to be on click, so that when the reader clicks on this, um, that it will take them back to the back to the table. Now we have to add the action to it. Okay, so we, we click on the Add the Action, a whole bunch of options come up here. The one we want is going to be Go to Destination. So we click on that, and some more information comes up. And what happens is, uh, in this Destination field, it's going to show us all of the bookmarks that we've made. Now, I've only made one, so that's, that's the one that it's going to select. And so now we can see that this item has changed and it's it's uh, got dotted uh, kind of uh, broken lines here as has this object over here so that indicates it's a button uh, also the little uh, uh, the little pointed finger there so let's have a look to see how this works I'm going to close this field we're going to go ahead and save the file I haven't done that for a while and then we're going to uh, uh, export this as a, P as a PDF and see if that feature works. So we're going to go to Export. And I'm going to just call it Test PDF. And we'll put that on the desktop. And we want to make sure that we've got Adobe PDF Interactive selected as the format. PDF is now appearing on the desktop there. It's generating the rest of the pages. Here it comes up. Zoom out. And let's just go to any of these pages here. And if we click on Table of Contents, this should take us back to page two. And it does. Okay. Any of the right-hand pages, they don't because we've not applied that uh, interactivity to this, uh, to this side of the page yet. So right now it's only going to work on the left-hand pages. Okay, let's close, um, close our test PDF and let's apply the forward and backward um, interactive features now. So I'm going to click on this one and that's a pretty small area to have as a button. So another technique that you can do to make it a little easier for your reader on something like this is I'm going to make a rectangle and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Give it a little bit bigger area here. Now I don't want stroke or fill on that. So I'm just going to get rid of the stroke and the fill. And it's a blank rectangle, but that's still an object that we can then uh, convert into a button. So uh, I've got this selected. We're going to go to our buttons. Say create button. And this one we're going to call uh, page forward. Okay, action or the event will be on click. The action is go to next page. 
Okay. Likewise, for this one, we'll create another, um, another black, blank rectangle. And no stroke, no fill. Go to our buttons, create a button. Call this um, previous page. On click, action, go to previous page. Okay, let's see how that works now. So I'm going to save this again as, as a PDF. Interactive, test again, replace that. And let's come down to one of these left-hand pages, and that clicks us there. All right. This should click us forward, and this should click us back. And again, these are not active yet. Okay, let's uh, let's close our um, PDF here and work on getting the. Um, uh, these buttons that are on, working on the left-hand page onto the right-hand page as well. To do that, I'm simply going to let's, see, let's get rid of this, zoom out a bit. I'm simply going to get rid of this content and then copy this content that already has the buttons. Add, copy, edit, paste. and drag it into place. Now let's make the table of contents. So get out of the master here. And remember our table of contents is going to go here on page two. And InDesign has a table of contents feature that's actually really easy to use uh, once you have your style set up. The way this works is that you need a paragraph style that you're going to apply to every item uh, identically that appears in your table of contents. So what I'm going to use for the table of contents um, items is I'm going to pick up the style that I have on these sections or these subheads. And so I'm using the same, um, the same type on each one and each one of these where you go through you can find you know this is the same type as the one before each one of those items is captured or created in a paragraph style now you have to set up this style uh, ahead of time um, we're going to go out of the interactive for PDF workspace back into our advanced uh, workspace and if we click on our paragraph styles when I click, uh, select this type, we can see that the style comes up that says section headings. And then I can double click on that and I can find all the details to the section headings. You need to have a style, and it has to be a paragraph style, uh, to create your table of contents. And that style has to be unique. You can't have anything that you don't want to appear in the table of contents using this particular paragraph style. So let's try this, shall we? Close this box, and the um, the table of contents is a function in uh, InDesign under your layout menu. So we come down to table of contents, and a dialog box comes up, and you can give it a name, or it's going to just call it contents. That's fine. And what we have to do here is select the paragraph style that we want to use for the item, for, to capture the items that are going to appear in our table of contents. So we want the section headings. So I click on that and then click Add so that it goes and, uh, and it, it includes it in this window. And that's really all there is to it. So we're going to click OK. And you can see that uh, you, you've seen this uh, this little text uh, capture come up before with the cursor. So now all I need to do is navigate to 
the place where I want to uh, paste this text, which is on my page two, and then click in here, and it includes, it went out and got all of those items, um, the names of the items, and the corresponding page numbers that go with them. It's kind of magic, right? Now this has picked up the exact same style, um, paragraph style, that was applied to those, those headings. I can change that if I want to. So if I want my table of contents to look different, uh, I can go ahead and reformat that now. And maybe you would redesign it to look something like, something like this. Okay, one more thing. Uh, we need to put an email address link on here. So let's go to page one and put in a, we'll put a little email link in uh, right under right under reading five there so a little smaller and make a text box and let's set that in so sans 500 uh, maybe 11 point, and then okay. So there's the email address. Now to make that active, what we're going to do is select it, and then let's uh, let's switch back to our interactive for PDF. And now here we're going to put in a hyperlink. So we've got the type selected. We click on hyperlinks, and that's a, a hyperlink that was already in the in the document uh, to uh, uh, to a YouTube video from uh, Davis Barber. What we're going to do instead of a, a URL for the hyperlink, we're going to click on here. Oh wait, wait, sorry. We need to create a new hyperlink. So on the new hyperlink page uh, tab right down here by the trash can, we click on that. And then instead of URL, we want to say uh, link to email. And then that will uh, assume that the text we have selected is the email address, or you could type a different email address in at this point. And then, um, and then we go ahead and click OK. Okay, so now by the hyperlink style, it's going to put that underlined and in a different color. If you don't want that, you can um, you can change the color or something like that. Here's the hyperlink color. Uh, maybe we don't want that to be a hyperlink color. Maybe we just want it to be black. Um, it's whatever you want. I'll, I'm going to go ahead and leave that as a hyperlink. All right, let's take a look at this. Let's export this uh, one more time. So file, export, interactive PDF. Let's give it a different name now if you want to. And let's see if everything works. So here's the hyperlink for the email address. If I click on that, it brings up my email. Okay, that works. Um, if we move into our uh, document, here's our table of contents. Let's pick uh, balancing elements, click on that, and it takes us to balancing elements. Uh, if we click back on the table of contents, that takes us back to the contents page. Uh, this works, this works, these work, these work. Table of contents works. Looks like all the interactive features are working uh, pretty much the way we want them to. Thanks for watching.